It's a new year as studios get ready to unveil their upcoming slates with plenty of guaranteed and surprise hits and some flops in store. However, how did they fare in 2017? Most of them did pretty well. One did not. So let's see how each of the six major studios managed to do, starting with the biggest winner, none other than that almighty company gobbling mouse, Disney. Of course, Star Wars The Last Jedi is proving to be a massive performer. No surprise there. Beauty and the Beast was also a juggernaut showing that Disney will be adapting their classic animated films into live-action movies for many years to come. Coming soon to a theater near you, Aladdin, Dumbo, and Milan. Marvel Studios continues to show their incredible consistency with excellent performances from the newest Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor adventures. The fifth, Pirates of the Caribbean, showed that ship is still sailing, though with the huge costs and slow drop in interest in the franchise, We'll see if they give Jack Sparrow and his pirates another go. Coco is also doing solidly, and interesting enough, this original Pixar project easily outperformed the Lamp's summer sequel. Cars 3 did okay, but don't expect to see more of Lightning McQueen on the big screen. And then there's Born in China, but those Disney nature productions are meant more as philanthropic causes than box office performers. Warner Brothers had a good amount of notable hits to their name. The biggest story was Wonder Woman, which proved to be the juggernaut of the summer. Thanks to its inspiring message and starring one of the most iconic superheroes of all time, it managed to hang on week after week. WB should always be congratulated for a certain creepy clown, as it became one of the most successful horror films in history. Dunkirk proved how Christopher Nolan is one of the few directors nowadays who can bring people to see his films on the big screen. Annabelle Creation was another horror hit for them, Kong Skull Island showed the strength of their gigantic monster universe, and the Lego Batman movie utterly delighted Batman and Lego fans alike. Everything Everything, with its teenage girl demographic and going in style aiming at senior audiences, showed with the right budget it's okay to appeal to a specific niche group. And then there's Justice League. Probably not the numbers Warner was hoping for. Not terrible, but certainly not good. At least it's not King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Now that was a disaster. Geostorm finally limped to screens with the worst timing imaginable. The House was one of a number of comedy flops in 2017, alongside Chips, because that was something people were demanding. The Lego Ninjago movie showed that, like those expensive sets, not everything with that brand is guaranteed to sell. And then nobody really cared about Fist Fight, Unforgettable, and Father Figures. Blade Runner 2049 is an interesting case, because Warner Brothers footed little of the bill on that one, so they're unaffected by its disappointing performance. Alcon Entertainment, on the other hand, not so much. But even with those disappointments, their hits were massive enough to consider 2017 a win for Warner Brothers. Next, Universal scored two billion dollar hits with the latest Despicable Me and Fast and the Furious sequels. But I think the real story for Universal was their successful collaboration with Blumhouse. Thanks to brilliant marketing, several high concepts, and incredibly small budgets, Split, Happy Death Day, and especially Get Out prove that Jason Blum is one of the smartest producers in Hollywood today. Oh, and the newest Fifty Shades did pretty well too. But I'm not going to kink shame you, Universal. A Dog's Purpose managed to avoid pre-release controversy to do well, Girl's Trip became the summer hit nobody expected, and Pitch Perfect 3 ended the Aqua Trilogy on a solid note. And then there are the curious cases of American Maid and The Mummy. They did not seem to catch a whole lot of interest from domestic audiences, but Tom Cruise is still able to sell tickets overseas. Although where that dark universe is headed, who knows. The Great Wall was another film that skewed heavily international. Forgot that existed, didn't you? Finally, Thank You for Your Service might have been too much of a downer for audiences, and The Snowman's Memory will only live on in humorous Mr. Police memes. Then we have 20th Century Fox, formerly of News Corp, and very soon of the Walt Disney Company. Needless to say, Disney is getting their hands on a valuable studio with plenty of hits to their name. The biggest for them was Logan, continuing the strength of these Fox superior movies that think outside of the box. While Hugh Jackman retired as Wolverine, Fox saw the start of a new franchise with Murder on the Orient Express, finding a sizable enough audience to get the ball rolling on more adaptations with Hercule Poirot. The Boss Baby is definitely the box office juggernaut I least expected. Who would want to see a movie about a baby in a suit? A lot of people, apparently. Kingsman the Golden Circle did nicely, so it won't be the final time we see Eggsy, and War for the Planet of the Apes managed to end the trilogy on a decent note. 
The Greatest Showman is proving to be a genuine crowd pleaser during the holidays and going into the new year, while Ferdinand is slowly but surely finding an audience, especially overseas. And while this was technically a 2016 release, Hidden Figures made the bulk of its money on its wide expansion the following year and deserves to be commended. Captain Underpants smartly outsourced his animation, proving to be a solidly profitable venture as a result. Alien Covenant can definitely be considered a box office disappointment, but Ridley Scott at least did not go overboard on the cost, although the future of the Genomorphs remains uncertain. One series that definitely saw its end on the big screen was Diary of a Wimpy Kid, with the fourth film. I guess people were serious about that Not My Roderick hashtag. The Mountain Between Us was also left in the cold, and Snatched was not the Mother's Day gift Fox was hoping for. And finally, A Cure for Wellness is destined to be that cult flop Shout Factory will give a special release to in 30 years. As for my favorite underdog, Sony Pictures, their fortunes keep rising with each year. Spider-Man Homecoming showed the value of working together as Marvel brought that box office magic to their web crawler's latest reboot. Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle has become a holiday sensation and continues to bring in big roses as I record this. Baby Driver finally gave Edgar Wright a big moneymaker, and the Resident Evil franchise can still bring in an audience, with the final chapter becoming the zombie series' highest grossing film. Sony's animation department had a pretty decent year too. Yes, those dastardly emojis did pretty well. Thank you for the free advertising, Jack Films. Smurfs Lost Village did decent enough business in Europe to make up for the disappointing domestic revenue, and the star was the low-budget religious success Sony was hoping for. Train Spotting 2 was made more for a UK audience, and that's a place where it made it big, and Underworld Blood Wars was also a small but notable early release. I think that's the key to Sony's recent rebuilding of itself, and how they've smartly handled their budgets. Even their few disappointments, including the comedy Rough Night, the sci-fi horror film Life, the latest incarnation of Flatliners, and the much maligned adaptation of Stephen King's The Dark Tower, did not affect Sony's bottom line that much. Oni the Brave did not seem to get much attention, but that was an acquisition and was already finished when Sony got the rights to it, while Roman J. Israel Esquire did not become the Oscar contender they might have hoped for. Still too early to tell on all the money in the world, although I think that film is seen as a moral victory with financials being only a secondary concern. So if you had any Sony hot takes, I would put them away now. They're doing pretty well. On the other hand... <sighs> Paramount. 2016 was not great for them, but I thought 2017 would turn things around. It did not. Did they have any successful films? Barely. Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage, might have been Paramount's biggest success story, a film primarily made for the Chinese market that did amazing business over there. And that sums up the studio last year, as they seemed to rely on the international market to bump up their films. Baywatch was saved by Germany's adoration of David Hasselhoff. Transformers of Last Night saw a troubling drop-off from the billion-dollar grosses of the previous two films, although it still made a little over $600 million worldwide. However, with their gargantuan budgets and audiences growing tired of the robots in the skies, it would be a good idea to do some tinkering there. Meanwhile, Daddy's Home 2 had an alright performance, Rings was cheap enough to turn a profit, and the Inconvenient Troop sequel was able to make back its meager budget. Now let's look at the flops, of which there were a good number. Mother just perplexed and annoyed audiences, though I understand why the combination of Darren Aronofsky and Jennifer Lawrence got that film greenlight. Suburbicon was one of those award season contenders that went nowhere, and downsizing will probably be the final time anyone gives Alexander Payne a budget over $30 million. Ghost in the Shell was the latest Hollywood adaptation of a Japanese anime to lose a ton of money, which begs the question why Paramount is making a live-action version of your name. And finally, you could write an entire book about what went wrong with monster trucks. Overall, Paramount had a pretty lousy year. My advice is to be careful what you greenlight, heavily analyze your budgets, and don't just rely on the Chinese box office to get you out of a jam. Even they're starting to grow weary of Optimus Prime. But I'm confident 2018 will be a much better year for you. Please be better, because I do like you, Paramount. And that goes for all the other studios. Have a great year, and I'll see you next time.